Hi, and welcome to Quilting with Lori. My name is Lori Dickman, and today I'm going to be sharing with you week number 52 of my 52-week series of Scrappy Blacks. Each and every week for the last 52 weeks, I have been sharing with you how to pull scraps from your stash to make a beautiful black in which you can make beautiful quilts. Many of you have joined me along the way and you've made scrappy blocks as we've gone through this 52 week series. Some of you have made them into sampler quilts. Some of you have chosen a few of them and have just made quilts with one, two or three of the blocks and that's exciting. You're actually using your scrap stash and that's the goal with this series. In just a few weeks, we're gonna see fall come across the country. I love watching the fall season as the trees change color. It's just so beautiful, especially here in the Midwest. And so today's uh, block is going to be the acorn block, which will help celebrate that beautiful fall season. So before I take you to the tabletop here and show you how to put this block together, don't forget there is a PDF that I attach in the description box below. It will give you the instructions and I'll of course be teaching those to you in this tutorial. And there's also on the second page a sample of a quilt that you might be interested in making. It's a neat little wall quilt using this fun acorn block. So let's get started and see how this block goes together. For those of you who are new to my channel, I do want to recommend that you go out to um, a video that I have and I will link that Speedy Solutions to Cut and Organize Your Scrap Stash video below in the description box. But that video will take you step by step on how to get your scrap stash cut, sorted, organized, stored, and ready to use to make beautiful quilts. This is the techniques book that goes along with that video, and this is an additional patterns book with beautiful scrappy patterns in there so that you can use these patterns and use up your scrap stash. So take a look at that. I'll also have the link to my website for this book set if you're interested in just checking that out. Now let's take a look at the block. Don't forget, as I mentioned, to pull that PDF. And basically, all of these 52-week um, series blocks have been 12 and a half inches unfinished. They will finish in the quilt at 12 inches. And this one is a series of two and a half inch blocks. We do have four half square triangles here. And to create those, we're going to be pulling three inch squares. And then after we make the half square triangle, we'll trim it down to two and a half inches. We're pulling from our strip stash. And so I pulled some two and a half inch strips from my light strip set, and I pulled um, a two and a half inch strip of dark. So you're going to need those from your strip sets. So let's take a look here. Um, what I used for this block, I used an eight and a half inch dark for the roof top of this um, acorn. I used two eight and a half inch um, side panels, if you will. Those are two and a half inch by eight and a half inch strips for the side. I have pulled two of the five and a half inch by two and a half inch strips for this. So these are all two and a half inch strips that I pulled and just subcut them, five and a half, eight and a half, and so forth. And then um, I have a two and a half inch top, and I just wanted them to match the top of the roof there, so I have that uh, for this particular uh, square. Then these are my three inch squares. I have two lights and two darks. And I'm going to put these together as I've shown you many times using my Speedy Solution Scrap Stash. Right sides together, dark with the light or whatever color combinations your pattern calls for. We'll draw a diagonal line. We'll sew a scant quarter inch on both sides of the line. Cut on that, um, press it and square it up to two and a half inches. And we'll end up with a total of four half square triangle units for this block. And so that's what we need. Um, we also need a total of 14 two and a half inch mediums and darks to make up your acorn. You've seen me put together half square triangle units um, many, many times on most all of these 52 week series of scrappy blocks. But what I simply did was place a three inch light and a three inch dark in case, in this case, that's the size we needed right sides together. I drew a line on one diagonal corner to corner. And then I simply took it to my sewing machine and I sewed a scant quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. It's kind of hard to see it. You can see it a little bit better on this one. And now I can simply cut on that and cut them apart. Before I do that, as I've shared with you before, I like to cut from sewing or stitching line to stitching line 
as I separate them, that just gets rid of some dog ears. And so that's what I, that's how I like to separate my half square triangle units when I've done them chain stitch like that. So I've gotten rid of some dog ears. Now I can simply take my ruler and my rotary cutter and cut them apart. Whoops. Sometimes when I'm seated doing this, I'm not pressing hard enough. There we go. For squaring up each of these half square triangles, and they each need to be squared up to two and a half inches, I am going to use my clearly perfect slotted trimmer, the uh, trimmer A, and I'm going to use the two and a half inch stitching line here. I'm going to match it up with that stitching line on the triangle and I will cut around and get rid of the excess. If you don't have a clearly perfect slotted trimmer or any other fancy type of a trimmer, you can certainly just use an omni grid or any ruler that has a 45 degree angle in it. If you do have one of these, then you would simply uh, press this open and I will probably just press toward the dark. And then I, once it's pressed, then you will take your ruler, line it up on the 45 degree angle, and then make sure that everything is squared up here at 12, two and a half inches and trim away the excess there. So that's how you could trim it if you're using a square ruler. You would have to press them open first. Because I'm using this triangular shaped clearly perfect slotted trimmer, I do not have to um, press them open. I'll leave them just as they are right now. I'm lining up the two and a half inch stitching line on the ruler to the stitching line on the triangle, trimming away the excess. There's not a whole lot. As you can see, that was all that I needed to trim away from the rest of that. But that's very important. That has to come away or you're not going to get your uh, block to go together well. And the clearly perfect slotted trimmer has these really nice little slots right there which cut away that extra dog ear. And now I can take these to my iron and press them. They're now all squared up to four, uh, excuse me, two and a half inches and I've got all four of them finished here. I'm going to go press those and I'll be right back. All right, so I've finished my half square triangles and now what I have done is laid out the block um, so that it's ready to be sewn together. And I see I've, I'm sorry, I've actually laid it out so that it's facing me and, and it's upside down for you. I apologize on that. But um, we're going to first of all start with the top of the um, acorn. Here's his little stem and these are the two five and a half inch strips. They're going to be sewn on each side of that little two and a half inch square. That makes the stem. Then on this row, we're going to take the eight and a half inch strip. We're going to sew these uh, light, dark, half square triangle units there, and that finishes the little roof top to that acorn. Make sure that you orient these um, half square triangles properly so that it creates that uh, slant there for the roof. Then we'll work on the acorn itself, and there are four rows um, wide and four rows down, and notice that I have the two little half square triangles down here, and they finish off the bottom of the acorn, so make sure that you orient those correctly as well. And once these are sewn together, then we'll sew these five and, or eight and a half inch strips to each side, and then we can sew these units together. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sewn. I'm going to start first with these two top rows, and I'll bring it back to the tabletop and show that to you when I'm finished. I've turned this around for you so that it's now facing you and the acorn is not sitting on his top as you're looking at it. These are the top two rows that I put together. Um, that included the five and a half inch light strips with a two and a half inch square for his stem. And then these are the two half, two, um, two and a half inch uh, half square triangle units sewn to each side of the eight and a half inch strip. So that's the top two rows. Now we're gonna finish the bottom four rows and we'll do that um, just by starting with the squares themselves and these strips will be sewn to that once the squares are complete. So what I like to do is simply web my um, block. You've seen me do this many, many times. I'm going to start, in my case, uh, this is the top left. In your case, it would be up here. 
but I'm going to take um, the second row, place it on top the first, bring it up to the sewing machine, stitch, um, bring this one up to the sewing machine, continue stitching, bring this up to the sewing machine, continue stitching, and bring this up to the sewing machine, and continue stitching. I will have webbed the first two rows together. Then I'll bring it back here and pretend this first two rows are stitched. Then I'm going to grab the third row and do the same thing. I'll grab this first one, lay it on top, and then I'll continue doing that with all four of these, and I'll do the same with the last four rows. They'll all be webbed together with one line of stitching. Then I can simply sew the rows together. It's just a very efficient way of webbing your blocks together so that things stay in the right orientation and you you're less likely to get things messed up. So I'm going to go ahead and get that sewn. I'll bring it back to the tabletop. So I have webbed these four rows together, as you can see here, and um, they're all webbed right here. And now I can simply um, continue sewing these rows together. What I like to do as I'm uh, working through each row is I'll finger press. So I finger pressed all of these this direction. I finger pressed all of this going this direction, all of this is going this direction, and all of this is going this direction. That way everything is laying opposite and it will nest beautifully when I flip them together. And I finger press them at this point and then once this portion is stitched together, then I'll take it to the iron and press it with the iron. So let me get these four rows together and I'll bring it back to the tabletop. This fun little block is coming together. So I have the top two rows here. This is now put together and pressed. I've pressed um, all of this up and I've pressed each of these rows in opposite directions so they nested beautifully. Now we can attach these two eight and a half inch light strips to the sides of the um, acorn. Make sure that you're doing this properly. This is the bottom of your acorn. These are the sides and then then we'll be able to put the top on. So let me put this together. I'll um, put it all together as one unit and I'll press it and square it up to 12 and a half inches and I'll show it to you here in just a minute. Here are both of the acorn blocks. I just think they're absolutely adorable. You could have fun using scraps and maybe you have a specific fabric that you'd like to use that's in your stash however you'd like to make them but I do think that they're just a really fun and simple block. Great way to use up lots of two and a half inch squares and a great way to use up your two and a half inch strips that you have in your stash. Don't forget to pull the um, PDF, which gives you the information on what you need for the block. It gives you a sample idea of a quilt that you could put together for a fun wall hanging for fall. Um, make sure that you do press and then square up the block to 12 and a half inches. They do need to be squared up to 12 and a half inches. They will go into the quilt and finish at 12 inches. Thank you so much for participating in my 52 week series of Scrappy Blocks. It has been a fun year of presenting a new block to you each week. I hope that you'll all present uh, blocks that you've created even quilts that you've created out on my Facebook group page. It's Quilting with Lori, Scrap Up Your Stash. I will have a link below. Please go out there, join that group, and start posting things that you're working on. It is always fun to be able to see other quilts that people are working on. It's inspiring. And so please be sure to post your scrappy blocks out there on that Facebook page. And also, if you are interested in taking a peek at that tutorial, make sure that you check that out. That link will be below be in the description box below. The book set uh, link will also be in the description box below. And I do want to mention I have other series that I am working on in my YouTube channel right now that I'd sure like to see you participate in. The Friendship Bouquet Block of the Month for 2023 is out there. I'll have links below in that. And also my Sampler Quilt Beginning Quilting Class is out there. So I will have uh, links below in the description box for you to be able to join and participate in those classes as well. We did work on a sampler quilt using our scrappy blocks. It was about week 30 or so, th something like that. I will, I'll find that link and I'll put it below in the description box so that you can see the instructions on how to 
put together a sampler block and we use the quilt as you go technique. I have a, a quilt as you go technique that I love to use. And so that is what I'm teaching. And so I've got lots of things for you to check out. Many different links to tutorials that will teach you everything quilting. So please have fun checking them out, uh, reviewing them. If you have questions or comments, I love to hear from my viewers. Please don't forget to uh, comment. And uh, if you want to ask a question, you can do it either through the, my YouTube channel here or you can go out to my website, quiltingwithlori.com, and go to the contact page and just email me there if you'd like to do that. If you like the content that I provide, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share my videos with your friends and with your quilt guilds. That really does help my channel and it will be able to get out to other viewers just like yourself. So until next time, happy quilting.